Your Steve Jones Show podcast is loading now. The Steve Jones Show podcast is sponsored by Sunbury Motors, North 4th Street in Sunbury, and Sunbury Motors Kia, routes 11 and 15 in Hummel's Wharf. Let's bring in John Sauber, Sunday Daily Times, always does a great job covering the team and has done a great job covering the story. John, welcome. Thanks for having me on, Steve. I appreciate it. John, what is uh, your impression, number one, of the hire of Mike Rhodes, but also the fact that it looks like it's a seven-year deal and the commitment to that? Yeah, I think uh, first on, on the hire itself, uh, it's interesting, right? I I think the um, the thought process probably among the fan base was that they wanted to swing higher. Um, I don't think there's anything wrong with hiring Mike Rhodes, especially what we've seen in the past when – when Penn State isn't as committed to men's basketball, right? Uh, I think offering over $3 million a year is a proof of that commitment on some level uh, to Rhodes. Um, I think, you know, he consistently got BCU to the NCAA tournament, consistently had really good defenses. Uh, it's definitely going to be a changeup from how we watched Mike DeShrewsbury's teams play the last two years, and, you mm-hmm. know, we can maybe we can dive a little deeper into that later. But, like, it, it is one of those things where I think he is going to get Penn State to a place where it's consistently in the NCAA tournament, and I know there may have been some, you know, aspirations to swing higher, given I think the trajectory that Shrewsbury was on. But I, I think Rhodes is a good coach, and I think again, this is a program that has not had a ton of success. Uh, I, I think getting the NCAA tournament consistently is a good step forward, um, and, and I think there's room for growth too, especially if, you know, maybe with uh, a little bit more of talent base to, to recruit to or to recruit from, I should say, maybe maybe Rhodes can get some better offenses to state college than he did you know down at vcu as far as the the length of the deal i think you know maybe we'll have to wait and see if the buyout numbers come out more importantly but i Mm -hmm. I think it's proof of commitment again to the program and maybe not wanting to get burned potentially by you know Rhodes wanting to leave in two years three years whatever that may be which really he hasn't done i mean that's that's not been that's not been the pattern of his career anyway Right. Um, I mean, this is a case where I think he was getting somewhere in the neighborhood of 1.7 at VCU, which is a terrific number. But he's going to get more money here. Oh yeah. I feel like in, I feel like it's just my general impression, John. You can tell me if I'm wrong about this. Sometimes I feel like the number you put in a contract for a coach can be an indicator of the commitment to the program. Do you think yeah. that plays a role here? Yeah, absolutely. I think that number means a lot. I think. Uh, just as importantly, the you know the investment in the program in other areas means a lot. That was something Pat Kraft mentioned in December when I asked him about you know their commitment to men's basketball um, and the ability to retain Mike Shrewsbury. And you know while they didn't retain Shrewsbury, they do look like they're going to put money into the program, whether that's mm-hmm. facilities upgrades, whether that's assistant salary pool, whether it's creating positions that that can help with areas like NIL and and things like that. I think there's proof here that you know maybe. Maybe three million isn't the number that we should pay attention to. I do think it matters, but it's the other investment, and I think the three million is an indicator of that investment. If this were to have happened five years ago, uh, there'd be a world of hurt because of roster construction. Uh, to me, the most the toughest part of the year for a football coach is the eight to ten weeks after the last regular season game. The toughest period for a basketball coach is the eight to ten week period following the last game of their tournament. We're in that period right now. What can the transfer portal mean to Mike Rhodes and to Penn State to get things started off at least on the right foot in the right direction? I think it means absolutely everything. Right? Uh, it, it, this is not the time of year to uh, find high school recruits. I'm sure that he will put the effort in to try and, you know, potentially retain Kerry Booth, to potentially re- retain Logan Imes. I think it's pretty clear cut that Braden Shrewsbury is going to go with his dad sure. in Notre Dame, as, uh, yeah. as we would expect. Uh, but I think, you know, even if he doesn't get Imes and Booth, uh, that's kind of the limit of, of, I think, what Rhodes can do from a high school cycle standpoint, right? It's just, it's just kind of so late in the game that it's really tough to get guys in at this time. So you're really relying on the portal for everything. And I'll be really interested to see because right now we know that there are three players on scholarship that are not in the portal, right? It's Demetrius right. Lilly, it's Keba Jai, and it's Kanye Clary. And we, we can't be 100% certain that they won't enter. I'm not saying they will, but, you know, they have time to make that decision as well. Um, and so we'll, we'll stick with that number of three for now. That means you have 10 other scholarships to fill. Uh, and I think, you know, it will be 
interesting to see the players that Rhodes targets. I think there should be a mix of, uh, you know, trying to find some of those freshmen and sophomores that maybe things didn't go well at the, the program they signed with and trying to get some of those guys in that you can use as more building blocks while also getting starter level and, you know, hopefully for their sake, star level players that can really lead a team to do well this year because otherwise this could, you know, year one could be really rocky. Um, I would assume that Rhodes will get enough guys to make this a competitive team in the Big Ten. Now, obviously, we have to wait to see who those guys are to determine just how right. competitive they are. I think the uh, fatalistic, like the program's getting buried here, is is just kind of incorrect because of the way the portal works. But I do think he is, you know, going to have to prove himself quickly in how he can recruit the portal. Which then brings the next part. Uh, I mentioned earlier, I, th- I thought when Rich Rodriguez took the Michigan job, he had a better shot and I'm not a Rich Rodriguez fan, but he had a better shot at some success at Michigan if he were able to bring his quarterback, Pat White, with him from West Virginia. Well, today he could have. Instead of having Ryan Mallett run that offense, he could have had Pat White. That means a coach moving from point A to point B. What are your thoughts on players on the current roster saying, I want to stick with him? Yeah, I think that is that's the the place that uh, you know uh, I think it has to start, right? If those guys enter the portal and he's allowed to contact them, you know, obviously the rules there are are what they are. But sure. uh, Ace Baldwin is the kind of guy at VCU. He was the A10 Player of the Year, the A10 Defensive Player of the Year. Um, again, not the kind of guard I think that we would have seen play for Michael Shrewsbury, but the kind of guard that excels under Rhodes and can be a star under Rhodes and has been a star under Rhodes. Um, you know, I would start there. I think Jameer Watkins is a type of wing player uh, that, that, you know, uh, Rhodes obviously really likes, you know, recruited him there and, and had a ton of success with him there. And I think guys like Jaden Nunn, who can really shoot the ball, you know, are going to be important too because spacing is going to be really important. I mean, in any offense, but especially this one where, you know, maybe Baldwin is an all right but not great shooter and Watkins is an all right but not great shooter. Uh, you know, I think you need those four spacers, but I think this really all starts with Baldwin and Watkins and, you know, if those guys yeah. decide to to follow uh, Rhodes to Penn State, I think that changes everything because they're both that level of player that, you know, they were two of the best players, and Baldwin was the best player on an NCAA tournament team this year. And I don't think there's any reason to believe they couldn't be next year. Now, it'll depend on how they fill in around them, but that is a that is a heck of a start if those guys decide they want to follow Rhodes to Penn State. Yeah, they were younger, but you and I saw them play against Penn State two years ago. Yep. Uh, we were, we were going to see them play last year in Richmond, but it was Penn State that got COVID, and that game was not made up. Um, but it, so it's not like some of these guys. I, and when I say you and I have seen them before, that's because at the point we saw them, fans were limited in the Jordan Center. That's why the fans didn't see them. Yep. And yep. yeah, and and that was also, if you remember, you know, that VCU team had Bones Highland, who's now with the Clippers, and had Ooh. a lot of the Nuggets, and you know that yep. is. There's some proof of concept there with development from Mike Rhodes. I think that is, you know, you're seeing it with Baldwin and Watkins. You saw it with Bones Highland. And I, I think that's something that he's going to kind of have to hang his hat on early, right? You want to get the mm-hmm. talent in right away, but he needs to get the base of guys in. We talked about this with Micah Shrewsbury, I think, before, too. You need to get your guys in. You need to get that first group of in, guys in to be that core, and you got to really develop them because then they're going to be the key piece, you know, to your first, you know, the idealized version of your team, if you will, right? Like the first group of guys that I think we'll be able to look at with Mike Rhodes at Penn State and say, this is his team is the one that's in like 2025 when his first freshman class is sophomores and juniors and they're able to really get something going. Until then, I think he's got to kind of, you know, maybe bring some of the culture from VCU if he can get some of those guys, but like Mm kind of fit pieces in around them and and work it slowly until he gets his first group of guys and they can really be, you know, uh, integrated into his culture and be exactly who he wants them to be. The one two one one full court press, which he has employed many times there, uh, has been critical. I mean, he has the ability to coach a team that will get offense from his from his defense. How important is that element, especially when you're in the formu- uh, formative years of a program? <laughs> Oh, it's, I think it's crucial, right, getting that, that yeah. part in because it's, there's a reason they call it the Havoc defense, right? It, it is just creating chaos and creating havoc for offenses, and they're trying to turn you over constantly, and they're trying to create chaos. And I think, you know, having what could be a young program, again, it, it's, it's tough to say with, without knowing who exactly is going to be there, but assuming a young program that doesn't know each other that well, creating chaos can be a good thing. 
Um, and I think it's going to be really disruptive, especially in the Big Ten, uh, the one 2 one, one. Uh, You know, teams aren't used to seeing stuff like that. Uh, you know, Big Ten teams don't necessarily have two or three ball handlers on the court at once. Uh, sometimes mm-hmm. teams only have one. So I think a, a press can be really effective in the Big Ten. So I think we could see if he gets the kind of guys he wants in early, they could be really, really good defensively. The offensive end will have to come around. And like I said, I think the biggest thing is going to be improving on offense for, for Mike Rhodes. His teams have generally mm-hmm. been middle of the pack in, yeah. uh, in Division One. But I think, you know, there is there is a baseline there that he can create and implementing that one two one one is, is kind of how he does that. They were, by the way, just so everybody knows in the Ken Palm numbers, this particular version of VCU that made the NCAA tournament winning the Atlantic Ten was one forty five in offensive efficiency, but fifteen in defensive efficiency in the Ken Palm numbers this year. Just so everybody everybody knows along the line. Yeah, State that's, basketball. Been, that's been the Go trend, ahead. too. If you look at his five years there, they've all yes. been kind of around those numbers on both ends of the court. Yeah, no, exactly right, John. I mean, Penn State will support a winner in basketball. I firmly believe that. And it was shown by the last game they played. The Now, you're talking about brand name Texas, brand name NCAA tournament, but also, let's face it, that's still Penn State across the front of the jersey. John, it got 6.6 million viewers on CBS. It was the sixth highest rated TV show for the week. Yeah, that was, it was also incredible basketball, right? I think that yes. always helps. And there's a level of excitement with the way that Micah Shrewsbury played, uh, had his team play because of the offense. And I think, mm-hmm. you know, this is going to be the inverted version of that, right? The the defense is going to bring excitement and that chaos will be fun to watch for people. And, you know, maybe the offense can be frustrating at times, but the defense will be an appealing brand of defense that I think draws people out. And, you know, it should be good enough to to draw crowds and I think should draw people to the Bryce Jordan Center. Um, it's always a mystery kind of to what extent because you never know, sure. you know, in the doldrums of, of December what it's going to look like. But I do think, you know, Big Ten play comes around. It's There's there's no reason to believe that he isn't able to get a good-sized crowd from there and, and, you know, get the support that he needs because he is going to need it. Uh, we, we You know, we've all heard the talk about NIL and everything, basketball needs that kind of support right to be what i think fans want it to be and and make no mistake about it this this team you said supporting a winner they could be a real winner too right like they could be consistent ncaa tournament team who makes a run to the sweet 16 elite eight final four down the road with the right amount of support because basketball is like you know it doesn't require the same financial funding as football you can kind of decide to be good at basketball if you have the funding and put the resources into it and you can be good and i think this hire is is probably the start of the intent to do that for Penn State. Interesting times. Uh, he will meet with his current team at VCU in about um, uh, in about twelve minutes or so, and then the a compensation committee will meet at four thirty, and then I, then we'll find out tomorrow when everybody gets to meet him. So. Yeah, John, thanks. So, I, I think something to look forward to now. Yeah, I mean, look, you needed after after a week. At some point, you knew they were going to get a rudder. They have it now. Yep. <laughs> so, <laughs> time to steer the ship. <laughs> yep. <laughs> John, thanks so much. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me on, Steve. I appreciate it.